the top story that we are tracking at this hour. In a big relief for Donald Trump, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that he enjoys some immunity from prosecution as a former president. The 6-3 ruling of the Apex Court, authorized by the Chief Justice John Roberts, threw out a lower court's decision that had rejected Trump's claim of immunity from the federal criminal charges involving his efforts to undo his 2020 election loss to Joe Biden. Donald Trump is a Republican candidate challenging Joe Biden, who is a Democrat, in the November U.S. elections. The duo took part in the first presidential debate on June 28th. Take a look at this. The U.S. Supreme Court on Monday ruled that presidents have, quote, absolute immunity from criminal prosecution over what the justices said were, quote, official acts. In a critical case over whether Donald Trump can be charged for allegedly plotting to overturn the results of the 2020 election. The landmark ruling recognizes, for the first time ever, any form of presidential immunity from prosecution. The 6-3 to three decision written by Chief Justice John Roberts split down partisan lines and threw out a lower court's decision rejecting Trump's claims of immunity from criminal charges. It ordered the lower court to evaluate which of the alleged crimes in the indictment were, quote, official and therefore immune from prosecution, and which were, quote, unofficial and potentially criminal. The Supreme Court's slow handling of the immunity case has already helped Trump by making it unlikely that any trial on charges brought by special counsel Jack Smith could be completed before the 2024 election. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. Smith indicted Trump in August of last year. Trump has pleaded not guilty. Trump's actions alleged in the indictment include efforts to fire and replace officials at the Justice Department, pressing Vice President Mike Pence to illegally reject state electoral votes, and working with state officials to concoct fraudulent slates of electors to support him. USA! The special counsel also accused Trump of fueling his supporters' violent efforts to storm the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. But the Supreme Court ruled that a president has, quote, absolute immunity for decisions governing appointments within the executive branch, including at the Justice Department, and that his communications with the vice president and with his supporters could be viewed as official acts. Liberal Justice Sonia Sotomayor excoriated the majority decision in a dissent, writing, quote, Today's decision to grant former presidents criminal immunity reshapes the institution of the presidency. It makes a mockery of the principle, foundational to our constitution and system of government, that no man is above the law. She added that the majority believed Trump should enjoy immunity from prosecution, quote, and so it invents an atextual, ahistorical, and unjustifiable immunity that puts the president above the law. Donald Trump praised the decision, writing on social media, quote, big win for our constitution and democracy, proud to be an American. The 78-year-old is the first former U.S. president to be criminally prosecuted, as well as the first former president convicted of a crime. President Joe Biden's re-election campaign said in a statement, quote, today's ruling doesn't change the facts, so let's be very clear about what happened on January 6th. Donald Trump snapped after he lost the 2020 election and encouraged a mob to overthrow the results of a free and fair election. Today's decision almost certainly means that there are virtually no limits on what a president can do. This is a fundamentally new principle, and it's a dangerous precedent, because the power of the office will no longer be constrained by the law, even including the Supreme Court of the United States. The only limits will be self-imposed by the president alone. In fact, to discuss this further, we spoke with lawyer and political analyst Stephen Golub, and this is what he had to say. Well, it's a very significant decision and unfortunately a very bad decision in terms of presidential, vastly expanding presidential prerogatives. Uh, for one thing, Official acts can be defined very broadly, and the court seems to be defining official acts very broadly, so that the president has great immunity, not just in terms of what Trump may have done previously that he's on trial for, but going forward. In uh, Justice uh, Sotomayor's uh, dissent, she alleges that 
as long as it seems somehow to fall arguably within the realm of official acts, a president can take a payment for giving someone a pardon or can have a military unit assassinate a political opponent. Is that an extreme characterization? Maybe, but it's not coming from me. It's coming from a distinguished jurist. And it really does raise very severe concerns about a concept that just a year ago, most legal commentators thought we'd never get off the ground, this notion of absolute immunity against criminal, uh, for criminal liability regarding official acts. Uh, it, it really is a reversal of what a lot of legal precedent and legal assumptions and jurisprudence had previously indicated. For all the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.